like your shirt. Thank you. So, uh, first question is, where do you shop and where do you get that jacket? <laughs> handsome? <laughs> I just follow you around, Chad. Uh, yeah. I, just go, I just follow you. I wait till the sales, and then I follow you. <laughs> what uh, moment of the show do you think will connect with audiences? Do you think will um, I think some of the questions we raise about what is uh, what happens after you die, and um, and what is it that um, uh, the the legends and the myth of ghosts that we've heard almost our whole lives. Is there a connection to the real physical world and the, and the um, scientific world and the religious world? Is, is there a truth in there somewhere that we can grab onto and go, hey, this maybe makes some sense? Uh, that's what I'm hoping for, at least. Yeah. So what do you think will be the most frightening aspect of the show? Is it like the very traditional sort of ghost story things, or is it the kind of more interpersonal aspect? I think, um, you know, what's great about um, fear is everybody here has a different one. Uh, what you are afraid of is not the same as what you are, what you are, what you are. I mean, everyone has their own personal fear of something that's unique to them. And what we're trying to do on the show is allow the ghosts uh, of our show to manipulate and take advantage of that individual fear that everyone has. So that by the time you've watched the whole show, that one fear that you might have might have been manifested in such a way that it haunts you personally because we did such a good job of exploiting it in a way that is uh, unique and different and, and kind of scary. So hopefully that's something that after a season of Ghost Wars someone could say, they did this thing with bugs or fire or water or the undead or whatever it is that you are afraid of and they nailed it and I think that way we'll have accomplished kind of what we set out to do which is to really tap into how individual fear is it's really uh, we all bring our own information when it comes to being scared and it really is about who we are where we come from what we've been taught what we've experienced things like that so that's I think a unique opportunity for a horror genre. So are you my personal fear is uh, sitting here talking to all of you. <laughs> Good night. No, it's not. It's not. Um, I think my personal fear is probably. Um, I think. Uh, I think just being alone, like not having anybody, no friends, no family, no loved ones, like just being completely isolated to the point where because I, I need to connect. I'm like someone who needs to connect. So I think that would suck. I was totally Have you ever had a experience? Sorry? Have you personally ever had a paranormal I have personally never had one, but I've had I have very close friends who've had them. So I I'm, I have one foot in. So are you skeptical or do you Um I'm skeptical but I I I leave room for it to be um, possible. So I know that there are a lot I probably filter out 70-80% of what I've heard as being unlikely or implausible and then there's that nagging 20%, 15% that I go, I just can't explain that one away and it drives me crazy and so I have to keep, you know, an open mind a little bit. Which is, you know, I think a lot of people feel the same. During the course of filming, um, for whatever fears you've touched on so far and what's just happened so far, have you ever found that one of the fears or one of the subjects you were, you were dealing with affected one of the cast members personally and that struck something or hit, hit a nerve with one of them? Yeah, I think we did a scene recently with uh, maggots. Oh, it was, in the it was in the trailer. And uh, it wasn't who you thought it was. It was the, the actress, uh, Sonia Bennett, who we dropped all these maggots on. You would have thought, well, she's the wrong person to have a fear of maggots, mm -hmm. which wasn't her, but it was, it was actually someone in the crew who just couldn't go near the, 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 uh, the area we were shooting in because they just had this really just uh, irrational, completely psychological fear of maggots. And they just were like, I can't be on set today. I can't do my job. I, 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 I will be freaked out. So uh, that's the closest we've come from. It wasn't a cast member, though. <laughs> 
did you have any um, consciousness of like horror tropes and whether you wanted to kind of avoid them or to kind of, as a nod to the genre, maybe deliberately include some of them? Yeah, we definitely, we're, we're hyper aware in the writer's room of all the horror tropes because with a collection of writers, you, everyone has uh, vocabulary. So in, this, in some cases, we just wanted to take those tropes and give them a twist so we could at least take advantage of them build an expectation of the trope and then use it against the audience. So in some cases those tropes are, are played out in the way that you expect them to play out and then we reverse them or we just don't make them pay off the way you thought. And that's a, that's a really handy weapon as a, a writer and a filmmaker because we all come from that experience of seeing so many shows and movies that you start to develop kind of an, an expectation of what's going to happen and if you're and as a viewer myself as a fan myself I want to I want to take that and you, manipulate you with it if I can because I know what I'm going to think when I'm watching it and if I can use that as, uh, as a way to surprise you then I accomplish it we all have what's your favorite horror movie then of all wow, time wow all time it's really hard because the, and it changes you know depending on where I am in my life um I mean, I think, I think growing up, well, Jaws had a huge impact on me, but it's such a great movie all just in, in general. It's so ex wonderfully executed, but it was really terrifying. I think Alien, too, the, uh, the first Alien really got me. Uh, I was the right age. I was 14 when that chest burster came out, so I was pretty fucked up after that. Uh, the Exorcist scared the shit out of me. Um, I had just enough of a religious education to like really be terrified. And uh, and then um, later on, I mean, I really like the thing. Just as a viewer, I was probably older when it came out to really be scared by it. But it just it was a great movie in terms of how it took advantage of your fears and expectations. I like also Polanski movies like Repulsion and Rosemary's Baby because it's a different kind of horror. It's yeah. that horror of internalism and um, isolation and paranoia. Uh, so those movies are great. The Shining, I think, is a masterpiece. Yeah, I can't pick one. It's impossible. <laughs> What's your stance on jump scares? Do you think they're like a cheap tactic? I like them when like they're them? not what you think they're going to be. Like, I think jump scare is best used when it's when the payoff is not the obvious choice. Sometimes they work because they work. And sometimes you plan them and they don't work. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a mixed bag. So, any, any ideas floating around that have like you question whether you should go with it? That's too much. Or In terms of oh, what we're showing? Of, of words, yeah, even most of the Yeah, I mean, there's a few graphic things that we've tried to do that I think are a bit over the top sometimes. But then I, you know, I, I turn to my my partners, uh, directors, the actors, the writers, and I go, is it just me or is this? And a lot of people will have their own opinion about it. So, but no, nothing. We, I've, I've, I haven't, um, I haven't uh, canceled anything. Questioned yourself? No, <laughs> not yet. No. There's still a few episodes to do, though. So. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Have you had to battle the network at all on anything about them trying to say no, no, no? No, no actually, the network's been really, really uh, helpful. Both networks, Sci-Fi and Netflix, are are really understand what we're trying to do. So they actually, I think, are uh, keen to have us push the envelope where possible. But I think at the end of the day, more important than that is just a good show. You know, they just want a good show that people want to come back to. And that ultimately goes to character and story more than the scares being, you know, the right kind of scares or the wrong kind of scares. And I think personally that's where a show succeeds is the, uh, the stories and the character. In the, I haven't looked at the information yet to see if you have if it lists who the composer is and the music you use for it. Yeah. The music's vital for I agree. Well, we, we, I approached a composer named Patrick Kerr, uh, and he is a, um, he, like me, is a fan of uh, those movies from the 80s and 70s and 90s, and likes that orchestral kind of filmic approach to horror. So we're doing a very kind of traditional orchestral score and um, leaning into that style, uh, much like the movies of those, of those eras. Yeah.
how far have you mapped out what you could potentially do in the series as far as like how long you want yeah. the story to go well on? we've got stuff we definitely have season two set up and where season two can go beyond that I uh, haven't really thought about getting too far down the rabbit hole because it's a very uh, evolutionary show not only with character but also location so uh, I'm sort of trying to keep the show's opportunities to grow and change alive so I'm not trying to get too dug in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's all I Thank have. you guys. Thank I really you. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Cheers.